I live a nomadic lifestyle. I live and travel full time in my tin tent, a Dodge Grand Caravan no build style. Welcome to the Hogtide Rising channel, an insight into nomadic van life seen through the eyes of a long time touring motorcyclist. I don't travel in a tiny home. I don't travel in a camper van. I don't travel in a minivan conversion. The only thing that has been constructed in my van is the bed platform. It's a tin tent. That means I have to set up camp every night when I arrive at a camping spot or an overnight's parking spot. That means every morning before I can leave, I have to break camp. I have to take all my stuff and put it in travel mode and secure it so it's safe. And in the event of a problem on the road, I won't end up with a bunch of luggage flying around in the back of the van. When I pull in to my overnight camping spot, but I want to be comfortable for the night. I, of course, am going to have to make sure that there's enough space in the back of the van for me to sleep comfortably. But I also have to be able to cook meals if the weather does not allow me to set up my kitchen outdoors. I also have to be able to work on videos like this one I'm doing now. I have to do some editing. So I have to be able to set up my office in the back of the van. Because I am an amputee working with and living with a prosthetic, I have to do a certain number of exercises on a daily basis in order to enable me to continue to walk. And then of course there's rest and recreation. I want to be able to just sit back, chill out and watch Netflix or Amazon Prime videos and be comfortable. So I have figured out ways to adapt my living space to accommodate all those needs. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's dive right in to the back of my van and see how I live 24 and 7, 365 days of the year in a tin tent. I have to set up camp every night when I arrive at a camping spot or an overnight's parking spot. I, of course, am going to have to make sure that there's enough space in the back of the van for me to sleep comfortably. This is my bedroom setup. So this is the way I would have the van set up just before I go to bed. Now over here in the corner, standing up on end to use up the minimum amount of space, is my everyday duffel bag. And that duffel bag gets moved around in the van because it carries stuff that uh, I need access to at any time. Behind that is my kitchen. That just goes into that little Harley Davidson bag. And next to it, that duffel bag that's up there, that's a combination duffel bag. It's the laundry bag for when I go to the laundromat. I also use it to store my extra sleeping bag. Underneath that duffel bag is that tote that carries things I need regularly, but not every minute. Next to that, you can just see the top of my folding table and my pillow. Towards the front of the van, my prosthetic. This van is set up because I am an amputee and I have to be able to move around easily and having the, the van with a bed platform makes it very, very easy. My paper towel, it's always handy, ready for cleanup. My closet, my hanging wardrobes. It seems a lot of people in van life say, well, what do you do about hanging clothes? What I do is I use thin wire hangers, the really good ones used at a clothing store, and uh, then I just hang my stuff up on that grab handle. When I'm traveling, I take them down off of that and fold them down and then they're out of the way. Even though I carry a lot of stuff in the van, I still do have just about my full twin size bed for sleeping in. I have to do a certain number of exercises on a daily basis. Every morning I do a series of exercises that are designed to strengthen my buttock muscles and my, my core, my abdominal muscles, and the muscles that I need to help me walk easier with a prosthetic. I have two sets of exercises which I do on alternate days. This is the way that I configure it for exercise session number one, series of stomach exercises. So all I really need is adequate room on the bed and then a pillow that I rest my head and my arms on when I'm doing these exercises. I don't need to use a bolster, so my duffel bag, my daily duffel bag, gets tucked in against the corner to give me room to lay down on the bed to do the workout. 
Exercise session number two is done on my back and I do need a bolster for some of those exercises. So that big old duffel bag is just the ticket. I like to double use things and you'll see that I uh, use it for other purposes. But I also have to be able to cook meals if the weather does not allow me to set up my kitchen outdoors. This is what I call my breakfast nook setup. In the foreground is my table with the legs folded down and right now I just use it in this position for doing some prep, making coffee, and then when I eat I actually fold the legs out and use it as a table. Behind that you can just see the lid of a plastic tote and I use it to store things that I need on a regular basis, not on a daily basis. So my breakfast nook setup consists of my Origo heat pal which which I use for heating and for cooking. And in the foreground, we have my jet boil that I use for boiling water for making coffee. And next to that is my a new AeroPress, uh, which I'll be doing a review on at a later date. A super piece of equipment. Of course, my kicking horse coffee. I never travel without kicking horse coffee. And my coffee grinder, and then ready to be pressed into action, is my mini Presso Espresso maker. This is my breakfast nook. Everything is easy and ready to use to put together breakfast and then it quickly and easily is stored away out of sight until the next morning. I also have to be able to work on videos to do some editing. For me, van life is not just a matter of traveling around, going to exotic places, hitting motorcycle rallies and other incredible events and documenting them on video. If you're going to shoot footage, you have to edit it. So this is the office or my command station. That handy little bamboo bed table is now being pressed into action as a desk. And it holds my iPad Mini 5 and that is what I do all my editing on. My iPad Mini 5 with LumaFusion. Then I have my headphones and behind there, my daily duffel bag is now being used as a backrest. With headphones on, I'm ready to go to work. I'm sitting at my command station in my little editing studio. Well, one of the most important parts is, of course, a source of heat if it gets cold. And I'm in Alberta, and it's December, and it can get a little on the chilly side. Fortunately, I have my Arigo Heat Pal, and that is now in heater format. It's got a nice aluminum cover over the flame, which prevents it from catching things on fire. And to help circulate the heat that it generates, well, behind it, I have a little two-speed USB fan, and that just does an incredible job of circulating warm air. With that little fan on, I get this van, the limited space of the van, heated up very, very quickly. Now here is my command post. As you can see, my iPad Mini 5 with LumaFusion ready. It's got a video on there ready to edit. This works very, very well for me. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It packs up very nicely in this handy briefcase that I have. And as you can see, this little bed top table makes for a very adequate desk in a small space. I want to be able to just sit back, chill out, and watch Netflix or Amazon Prime videos and be comfortable. After a hard day of editing videos at my command post in my editing studio, it's time for a little R&R. &R. And as you'll see, my fan sets up quite nicely for it. You'll see a lot of the same familiar things be being utilized in a somewhat different purpose. The, uh, the heater is still in place. As a matter of fact, it Shiver got a little chilly, timbers. so I turned it on. But my command post has been now changed into an entertainment center. Instead of my iPad Mini 5, which I use exclusively for editing videos, I have my little iPad iPad Mini 4, which I just use for videos. I will download Netflix videos or Amazon Prime videos whenever I'm somewhere with free Wi-Fi so that I can watch them at my leisure in the van for R&R. And to augment the sound quality, well, I've got this excellent JBL speaker here that uh, just gives a little bit extra punch and makes my video watching more enjoyable. Now let's watch 
a little video. What have I got here? No Country for Old Men. Ooh, that's a good movie. I also have to be able to cook meals. After a hard day of video editing and then video, well, Netflix movie watching, it's time for dinner. So my dinner setup is quite a bit different than my breakfast setup. And the main reason being is I don't drink coffee in the evening. I usually have a beer with dinner and that's a lot easier to prepare than coffee, especially when you do coffee the way I do. So it's a, a lot simpler. So what we have here on my table, which is in preparation mode with the legs folded down, Crave Dinner. That's what I depend on a lot when I'm traveling. They're quick, they're easy. You can go into any grocery store and pick them up. I like Crave, but I also like a lot of the other ones that, they, that are available in the frozen entree department of any grocery store. Steamers, fit bowls, all sorts of different dinners. A lot of variety, quite tasty. This one in particular, oven baked chicken and ham and macaroni and cheese. Not a lot in the way of vegetables. So what I do is I have a slaw, a coleslaw. All sorts of nice crunchy vegetables. It's got kale and cabbage and beets and then a little bit of dressing there. I like blue cheese dressing, chunky blue cheese dressing. And a Big Rock traditional ale, as it will be my beverage of choice. Some of these dinners you buy, like Crave, come in a really nice little plastic container that you can put in the oven or put into a microwave oven. But what I do is I transfer the food into my skillet and then to save cleanup afterwards I use that plastic dish as my salad bowl. And then I only have the one thing to clean up. And because I eat directly out of the pan that I use to prepare my meals, real simple cleanup with a 50-50 vinegar water mixture. I will be putting this on my heat pal. Covered up with the lid, set for low heat, and while I'm eating my salad, that will nicely heat up. There we go, salad's got the dressing in, all ready to dive in while, while my main course is heating up on the stove. Now you gotta make sure when you're using one of these alcohol stoves that you do crack your window a little bit. You gotta make sure that you've got a good supply of oxygen because it is an open flame and it does consume oxygen. Methyl hydrate doesn't give off carbon monoxide, it gives off carbon dioxide and water vapor. So cracking the window will also help cut down on the amount of condensation you got. But it's a good system. It's quick and easy. So this is my dinner setup. It's been a hard day here at the Steveville Bridge Campground. What with getting up, doing my exercises, making breakfast, setting up to do a little video editing, shooting all this footage, watching a few Netflix videos, making dinner, cleaning up. Well, time to get some rest. It's time to go to bed. And I think it might be a little nippy tonight. I could drop Shiver down all the way timbers. to minus 10. It's just feeling a little bit of a chill in the air. I got myself all set up, got bed set up. I'm gonna show you how I set up my van for a night of sleep. Because I think it's gonna be a little chilly, I brought out extra bedding. I've pulled out my sleeping bag, which I lay out flat on the bed and use it more as a quilt than anything else. Got my day duffel bag in its corner, where it'll more or less be out of the way. Pillows ready, everything is ready to go to bed. As you can see, my Arrigo Heat Pal is not sitting on the corner of the bed like it was during the day when I was using it as a heat source. And that's because I want to make sure I wake up in the morning. I don't want to take any chances with having an open flame burning in my van while I'm sleeping. Now, the Origo does not give out carbon monoxide. However, you have to be very, very careful of oxygen depletion. That is not a risk if there's no flame burning. So I put the Origo away. I don't use it when I'm sleeping. And instead, I will layer up. I layer up on my bedding, and I'll also layer up on what I wear when I go to bed. So you might have noticed that I have a toque on and a hood on and extra clothing keep my core warm. That's how I handle the cold at night. Every morning before I can leave, I have to break camp. 
Spent a very pleasant evening last night, dead to the world in my tin tent. But now it's time to leave. It's time to hit the road. Time to pack up camp, to break camp and pack everything up so that I can safely travel without worrying about any luggage being loose in the back and maybe becoming a flying hazard if there happens to be a problem on the road. So what I'm going to show you now is how everything packs away. Nice neat simple and nicely secured by my quarantine cargo net you can see my table my camp table my desk is all nicely secured on top of some totes and i secure it with a couple of flat bungee cords down here is that tote that you've seen being used for a number of different things its primary use of course is to store items but i also use it as part of my breakfast setup over here is that tote that I use as a combination laundry tote and to store my sleeping bag which I really needed last night and on top of that is my Harley Davidson day pack which I have been repurposed to use as my camp kitchen and that's where I store my jet boil my mini presso maker, my aero press, and all everything I need for most of my meals. Here we have my heavy duty tripod. Uh, next to that is my backpack with all my camera equipment in it. And next to that, the briefcase that holds my studio. Everything I need for editing. That's where they go, on top of that plastic tote. Next to be put in place in front of the tote and the, the backpack and the Briefcase is my everyday duffel bag that you've seen me use for a number of different things. And in this last row, my beer storage cooler. And on top of that is my cracker box. Next to that is my Arigo heat pal. And then over here, snacks for the road. And it's right close to the door where it's readily accessible. While on the other hand, my beer cooler is as far away from the driver's seat as possible to make it as legal as I can. This is my home after all. I am allowed to carry a certain amount of alcohol with me as long as it's not readily available and readily accessible from the driver's seat. With my totes stored on the driver's seat while I'm camping, this is what confronts me. When I'm ready to get into the van, I got room to get in and take my prosthetic off and in the morning after everything's packed up I have room to get out and there's everything all nicely secured with my quarantine safety net which I strongly recommend if you're going to carry loose luggage in the back of your van then I urge you to look into getting some sort of a cargo net here on the front seat of my tin tent is my pantry my the storage totes that carry my food and what I use to prepare my meals and they will all go into this place here those three totes fit quite nicely into the the space between the door and the bed and that leaves the driver's seat of my tin tent ready to be occupied by the driver I guess that would be me what the back of my van looks like when I'm traveling over in the left hand corner is my igloo cooler next to that is a couple of totes the top one is a pantry tote the bottom one is an equipment tote and then over here is my porta potty my hassock commode on top of that my utility story things I might need for life on the road windshield washer fuel treatment it's basically a carry-all a good safe secure place and secured by my quarantine safety net and I'm ready to hit the road. Everything is now safely packed away, stored in a good, safe, secure place, and secured by my quarantine safety net. And I'm ready to hit the road. And where am I off to? Well, I can't be sure. My plans change at the spur of the moment. I come to a fork in the road, and instead of going the way I had been maybe intended, something looks good, and I go down that other fork and end up someplace that I had no intention of being at. But I do know for sure, wherever I end up, my tin tent, will accommodate my every need just as it has every day for the last year of traveling being a nomad living full-time in a tin tent <laughs>